Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 7th, and it is a cold, rainy, and snowy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania, and I'm a little bit too far away. There we go. <laughs> uh, first, uh, first video of the new year. I hope you all had a very happy new year and uh, enjoyed festivities, and your 2024 is off to a great start. Mine is uh, going well so far, so no complaints here. Uh, today I wanted to uh, smoke my 2023 blend, and we'll talk more about what that is. I've, if you followed me for a while, you, you know what I'm referring to. Uh, but I'm going to enjoy that. I haven't loaded it up yet because I want to give you the full blow-by-blow, blow, but I've got my uh, Sassini 4 dot here, a gift of my, uh, my good friend Doug Owen. So thank you, Doug. Much appreciated. Really enjoy this pipe. Don't smoke it enough because it's kind of special, but... Um, I really enjoy it. And the blend is in this jar here. Nice full jar. And what I do here is uh, everything I smoke during the year that's different from my usual routine. So uh, tins that I open, uh, things that we've been doing on the uh, tobacco of the week over on the live stream. Uh, all of those things, as I get to the end of the tin or the end of the jar or the end of the bag, whatever I'm, I'm smoking, the last bowl's worth of that, uh, approximately, and whatever it looks like it would, it would fill a bowl, goes into a large jar. I've got that right here. And uh, it's labeled, you can see I was lazy, so I just kind of scratched out the 22 on this and made it a 24. But it's labeled for the year, and uh, I'll put the last of that tin or, or jar or whatever into this, shake it up well, and then set it aside. And I do that throughout the year. There's some rules about what goes into this. Uh, it cannot be in my regular rotation. So no Haunted Bookshop, no Pegasus, no uh, Low Country, Virginia, uh, Virginia Briar, uh, Virginia Burley. There we go. Virginia Briar. Uh, because if I were to do that, then this would just be a big jar of haunted bookshop with some uh, some of those others thrown in. So they cannot go in here. No aromatics and no lot of Kia blends, primarily because they will just dominate the the blend, and I I don't like that. Uh, and that's it. Those are, those are the rules. I do that throughout the year, and at the end of the year, I or at the beginning of the new year, I transfer it into a new jar. One bowl's worth of last year's blend goes into this year's jar to start it off. You can see I got that here. And we proceed with the next year. It's fun. It's uh, it's not what a lot of people do, which is just sort of throw all the odds and ends, whatever the last bit is, and stuff they don't like and all that. It's, it's, it's got some rules to it because I found that those other things just don't work. You wind up with a mishmash that doesn't taste very good. Uh, if you put something you don't like in it, it dominates it, and you never get rid of that thing you don't like. So these rules have worked well for me. I've been doing this for about four years now, I think. And uh, let's get into what this year is. So let me load this up. I'll, I'll show it to you. I'll get it loaded and start started smoking, and uh, then I'll tell you what's actually in here. But you can see it's a nice, uh, nice blend. Looks like tobacco. A... Uh, mishmash of cut here but mostly sort of chopped ribbony sort of stuff with a little bit of chunky things thrown in and uh, we will load that into the sassini sorry I'm not looking at you but I don't want to spill tobacco all over myself as I do this I'm doing this in my lap by the way that's why I'm looking down here so low I've got a desk over here and there's just sort of a small uh, thing set up here that doesn't really have the room to do anything on. So, Okay. So the bowl is back. And before I light it, I'll tell you what's in it. I've got that here in my archive, which I keep on my Telapodonono device. So this contains uh, the 2022 blend, so the blend from the year prior. Some of Cloud Bear's Four Monks blend, Peterson Irish Flake from 2017, Warhorse Ready Cut, Virginia Gentleman, some Samoy from 2014, 
St. Bruno's Ready Rubbed, Crooner, Sam Galwith Best Brown Flake, Cornell and Deal Cajun Cake, John Patton's Early Oriental Dusk from 2015, McClellan's Brindle Flake from 2010, and Germain's Brown Flake from 2015. So it's a nice mixture, uh, some, some nice aged tobaccos in there, some things I've never had, like the St. Bruno Ready Rub that was, uh, if I had had that, it was a long time ago. Uh, Virginia Gentleman was new to me this year. That was another uh, gift from Doug Owen. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of crooner in there. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Well, I did smoke this on Friday night in the live stream and talked a little bit about it, but this is going to be my, my more detailed impressions of it. So I'm not going to tell you all the stuff about how it packs and everything because you can't get this, you know, but you should try it. It's, it's a fun little exercise to... To do throughout the year and it just gives you something to enjoy during the, the the next year i'll smoke a bowl or two of this a month uh as i get towards the end of the year i'll start to gauge how much i have left i try to end it in december uh, and then the the new batch is ready in january so let's light her up So the first light, I said this on Friday night, and I say this every year, I'm surprised by how much Virginia comes through. Uh, I consider myself a burly smoker, but a lot of the things that I smoke that are novel wind up being Virginia's. And it makes perfect sense that this would be a Virginia dominant blend it's um there's perique definitely getting some perique and some sourness because some of those blends had some orientals in them and i think that's contributing a bit of sourness to it Has a good hit of Perique. The Virginias are very complex. There's a a lot of that deep red Virginia flavor, but there's some high notes in there too. But nothing too tart and tangy, which is what I don't like about Virginia. A lot of deep, mellow sweetness. Now, this is nice. As I probably say every year, if I could buy this, I would. But it wouldn't be an everyday smoke for me. I'd probably smoke it about as much as I'm going to smoke this blend. This year seems much deeper uh, than previous years in terms of the the depth of that Virginia. It's got it's got a, a bottom to it. Maybe there's some maybe there's more burly in it than previous years, and that's sort of helping fill out that bottom note. It's nice though. Glad I've got it. One thing that I did differently this year is you, you notice I included crooner. And normally I wouldn't do that because uh, I think of crooner as not really an aromatic, but it's got the deer tongue in it, which is an additional flavoring. And when I smoke crooner, that's what I taste. Um, I mean, there's burly there, but but the, the deer tongue is very strong in Korea.
but I'm not getting your tongue here. It's it's, it's really not um, unless it's just lending itself to that sweetness. And look, Big Dave, copious amounts of thick white smoke. So there's your there's your blend. Probably say this every week, but my buddy Big Dave likes copious amounts of thick white smoke. Ah, yeah, good stuff. Very good. So I encourage you to give this a try. It's um, it's just something that adds to the. Uh, the sort of enjoyment of what we do. And for me, these things are about these things. Jeez, it really is thick and white, Big Dave. These um, rituals that we that we developed, whether it be simple rituals around how we pack the pipe and you know prepare the tobacco, or things that take a full year, like like making a, a jar like this if we go to pipe shows you know the planning for that and the marking of you know there's this pipe show at this time of year there's another one at this time of year it marks the passage of time and that's true in many aspects of our life you know I look forward to things like breaking up the leaves at, at the end of fall or uh, Preparing the gardens in, in early spring, they're, they're, they're part of the ritual. They're just part of what marks the passing of time. And I think it's important, especially as you get older and time starts to move more quickly, it gives you an opportunity to sort of slow down and focus on that moment. Uh, not to get old new agey mindfulness on you, but it, it's important to focus on what you're doing as you get older, because otherwise the time just flies by. I mean, I, I mentioned last week that I don't know what happened to last year because I was just so busy. I never had that time. So These kind of rituals can help with that. One thing I will say about this blend, and, and this is true in past years as well, because it is so Virginia dominant, this is really more of a sipping blend. This is not something you're going to just pop in your pipe and go working on something. You, you, you could, but you just won't get as much enjoyment from it. This wants to be smoked slowly. So yeah, start of a new year, you're going to probably smoke all sorts of new and interesting tobaccos. Make yourself a jar. See how it goes. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe you'll hate it. And it'll, if you're a video guy, um, it'll give you something to start the year with when you when you go to make your YouTube videos. Oh boy. Well, today. The weather is lousy. Uh, we get this slushy mix out there. I don't really know if I need to do anything with the sidewalks. I was gonna, well, the, the weather report yesterday was crazy. When I got up in the morning, it was saying there'd be four inches of snow beginning at five o'clock. And I thought, well, heck, I got plenty of time. Um, and then I checked an hour later and it said there'd be one to four inches of snow beginning at one o'clock. I thought, hmm, I have less time than I thought. <laughs> and I had to go and do some stuff. I had to get some groceries in. I had to pick up. Uh, my dogs take these uh, special treats with their dinner, which have, um, it's, it's called Dasequin. It, it's for their joints because they're starting to get a little bit of arthritis in their joints. And uh, it seems to be helping. So I had to pick up those because they were out of them, uh, get some gas for the snow, uh, snow thrower because uh, I hadn't refilled the gas tank since last year and you know just stuff like that and pick up a few groceries and so I got out early to do that once I heard that it was going to start at one o'clock because I figured the stores were going to be crazy and it wasn't too bad that was early enough that 
people hadn't yet woken up and panicked. The milk and toilet paper crazies weren't out yet. Didn't buy either of those, by the way. So I got everything ready. I pulled the, both cars into the driveway. Normally my wife parks in the driveway like halfway up because for some reason she can't pull up all the way. And uh, I park on the street. So I had to pull her car up, move my car behind her. I do that because it allows the plow to go by, but also that's a larger stretch of driveway that I don't have to worry about because the snow doesn't land on it. So I was all ready and I got to tell you, the weather report was accurate in that around 1 o'clock, it started to snow. I mean, it was almost 1 o'clock on the dot that we started to see snow come down. What it was wrong about was the amount. We got maybe a half an inch, and then it started to rain. And it rained all night, and now it's switching between snow and rain this morning. Uh, there's just slush out there, and it's going to get up to 40 today. So I think this is probably all going to melt before uh, anything needs to be done. So I'm just going to let it ride and we'll see what happens. If, if it gets bad tonight, if it's still out there, I'm going to have to go out and at least salt because the ice is going to be bad. Shop-wise, I still haven't done very much down here in, in terms of my drawers or my wall painting exercise. Uh, just haven't had the time. Uh, been, I've had the time, but I've been spending it upstairs with my wife, and we've uh, watched some TV. Nothing. Did we watch a movie? Oh, we did watch a movie, with, but that was that was this week. Yeah, I think we watched it on Sunday night. We watched. Um, Fat Man, which was a recommendation from my buddy Phil Rivera, and man, that was a fantastic movie. Mel Gibson as Santa Claus, and uh, it was different. I'll tell you that it was different, but it was a fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this a regular holiday movie. We really enjoyed it, and it was well done. It was it was actually a really well made movie. Not not just it wasn't like a wacky comedy or anything. Um, it had funny moments in it. It actually had a fair amount of drama as well, and uh, an action. It was it was a good movie. So if you get a chance to see it, it's called Fat Man, and starring Mel Gibson. As I say that, it might be called The Fat Man, but you can you'll find it. Ah. Uh, and I've got a, a, a movie queued up to watch that my buddy Poem told me about called Sisu. It's Sisu, which I think is uh, a World War II Russian movie. He said it was very, very good. I haven't, I know nothing about it, but I'm going to try to watch that this week and see how that goes. But anyway, I haven't been spending a lot of time down here in the shop is the bottom line, but it's been time well spent because as I mentioned last week I'm trying to cut back on the work and live life a bit more and uh, I figure we'll start the year slowly today I'll probably spend some time down here today I um, can't do anything outside it's it's miserable so I might start to get that wall prepped I got to move stuff away from it and the biggest thing I got to move away is I got to set of shelves that have books on it and that's a nightmare because you've got to take every book off to move it and it's going to take me a long time to do that but it gives me an opportunity to sort through it why do I have books here in the basement well <laughs> because I've run out of places to put books elsewhere it's a mixture of mostly woodworking books um, some magazines woodworking magazines there's some Luthery stuff mixed in there from back when I was doing Luthery. There's some rod building stuff in there. Uh, some fly tying stuff as well. So yeah, it's a it's a it's a mismatch, but and a lot of like pieces of paper for sketches of things I've built and things like that that I put into folders and they're in like, these magazine file box type things. 
So that's all got to move. I'm going to look over this, see what else I have to move. Yeah, I've got my, my little beer fridge is there, my um, old lathe that I use as a buffer and a jointer, and then there's some of the old dust collecting system that uh, I don't use anymore that I need to take off the wall. And at that point, I just have to clean the wall well, and then uh, I, can, I can put the uh, water lock or whatever that stuff is called on it. All of this so I can mount a shelf. Never ends. And I want to get that done first because that'll give me some more room to work down here and then building the drawers for the chest of drawers will be a little bit easier. Onward we go. Well folks, that is about it for me today. I hope you're having a great Sunday and looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. If you're not enjoying a annual blend uh, that you made yourself, I hope you're enjoying something good today. And uh, yeah, spend some time with the family. Enjoy life. It's important. All right, friends. Well, with that, I will draw this to a close and just say that until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.